Metacham is a weird dude that not a lot of people use. Stat-wise, this thing is pretty booty. With 60 attack and 80 speed, he's gonna have a hard time. However, it does of course get the ability Pure Power, which fixes a lot. This just straight up doubles Metacham's attack, and all of a sudden, we're in business. At level 100, its baby 206 attack is actually 412, which is stronger than things like Salamence. We can slap on a Choice Scarf to make him quick, and its fighting psychic typing allows for some unique offensive pressure. Stab Close Combat with Pure Power literally hits like a truck, along with Zen Headbutt, and Metacham can actually function really well as a revenge killer that not a lot wants to switch into. Alright, look, I've been in the Wi-Fi battling game for a very long time. I'm talking when the Nintendo DS came out with Diamond and Pearl, and it allowed us to connect to Wi-Fi and battle with other people. And I gotta tell you, Metacham has always been that dude. It's always been a good brain, and a huge power with a choice scarf is just a, a pretty consistent little fella to have around. I'm also a pretty consistent fella to have around, and you should keep me around by clicking that subscribe button. And let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so my guy's got his Iron Man suit ready to go, and he's gonna lead off with the Grim Snarl. So, Buff Fairy is, of course, always annoying, and at this point, I just decide to lead off with the Zapdos, because it's a nice little pivot. However, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for a Thunder Wave. If I can paralyze this thing, half the time it feels like it's not gonna be able to do what it wants to do, and that means just less screens and my offenses might be able to touch stuff. So, they do set up a light screen, as I do go for that Thunder Wave, and the para there is going to be hopefully a little bit helpful, but at this point it's kind of just inevitable. I need to start throwing Brick Break or Psychic Fangs on more teams, but uh, it is what it is. Anyway, so they actually end up going for the Parting Shot here. Just going to skip the Reflect, which is totally fine by me. What's also fine is that I click Volt Switch, so no matter what they decide to go into here, as it turns out to be Backscalibur, I can be like, hey, what's happening? I'm out of here. Hit a little... Uh, a little U-turn in the middle of the highway, except in a Volt fashion, and I just get the switch out of here. So this is perfect, as Backscalibur comes in, not the general guy you want to set up on you. And having all the options here is perfect, because I can go into the Tinkaton here and threaten him with my massive hammer. I got a girl with a hammer, and you do not want to play games out here. So, uh, I do threaten this with the Gigaton, I also potentially want to set up the Stealth Rock, but anytime you're facing a Backscalibur, it has the option to go for something like a Terra, potential Dragon Dance, and shit gets out of hand quickly with that Icy guy. So, I decide to go for that Gigaton Hammer, they are actually going to end up switching into the Serra Ledge. I, I flatten his ass into a Pancake, but it doesn't really matter. Not going to do a whole lot of damage here, but I also know that this thing definitely wants to set up. Sarah Ledge in this position kind of is forced to go for the setup here, so I can just go for the knockoff. Kind of thought it would be close to grabbing a kill. Uh, this is more of a defensive Tinkaton, however, and I don't have quite enough damage. But what I do have is actually a pretty good position here to make some stuff happen with Colossal. I decide they're for sure going to go for the Bitter Blade here. I can bring in Santa Claus, and your ass is getting coal in the stocking today. They go for that Bitter Blade. And while it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and this thing with a sword stance is threatening, what that does activate is uh, my freaking steam engine ability. This Colossal is now in a spot with that steam engine. I get that drastic speed raise, which gives me plus six, and I am now zooming. I'm a big fella who's getting going quick. I can now outspeed and go for the Meteor Beam. You're thinking to yourself, damn, Meteor Beam's going to take two turns. That's a bad idea. I grab the special attack boost, and then Psych Bitch, I actually do have the Power Herb, which allows me to activate that uh, Meteor Beam attack immediately, fire it off, and take care of the Serra Ledge. So this is uh, a pretty good spot for the Colossal to be, but this is going to draw in the Bad News Lizard. You got a water guy who is looking extra skinny over there. Get this man a cheeseburger, uh, but also, you know, I'm four times weak to the water. And I'm like, well, that's kind of bad. Except I'm prepared for this. This thing is actually built to go for the Terra Water, uh, predicting water moves to activate the steam engine. But uh, sometimes the fire does it perfectly anyway. So I'm actually just going to go for that Terra Water. I'm really going to try to make as much use of this plus six speed and plus one special attack colossal as I can. I go for that Terra Water. Uh, it's going to allow me to take a hit, but also allows me to fire off another Meteor Beam. Because while I go first here, I grab that special attack boost. I'm not going to be able to attack until next turn. Uh, however, they do just snipe shot, and uh, I take that nicely, and now something is about to get beamed from the power of a meteor. It sounds pretty damn insane. Nothing really wants to deal with that, but they decide to switch into Corviknight. This thing comes in flapping, unaware of what's about to hit him. I go for the meteor beam, and it misses. The 10% chance to miss has hoed me once again. The light screen does wear off now, however, which is actually... A pretty good spot to be. I also know that I'm extremely fast here, so I can just go for the flamethrower. Kind of thought they were going to commit a Terra. 
uh, but the core of the night does just get taken care of, which is actually solid, mostly because that's going to open the door for physical attackers like my Metacham to uh, do way more damage and not have to worry about that thing switching in, uh, except now this draws in the Galarian Slow King. You're thinking this is turning into a damn colossal video, however, this Slow King takes literally no damage from a plus two flamethrower from Colossal, fires off the Psychic, and that is at least a little bit of good intel, right? Because this tells me the way that that thing took that flamethrower, it's literally a plus special defense nature, max HP, and max special defense. There's never been a guy more built to handle this Colossal. So I decided to go for the Scald here just for the 30% chance to burn, knowing that nothing's going to take care of it. And uh, I do, in fact, go down to the next Psychic. So Colossal's day will, in fact, come. I assure you, there's going to be a Colossal highlight coming soon. But... Um, I did some nice damage to the team, however, which is pretty solid. I did commit the Terra, which does kind of... Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but I've poked some holes in their squad at least, which uh, most notably Corviknight being gone does open the door for the dude Nipplenee to have a pretty good spot here. So I bring in the Metacham, and while the Zen Headbutt is obvious as super effective damage, they do have a Dark type in the form of that Grim Snarl in the back. So instead of going for the super effective hit, I'm actually just gonna close combat here because huge power close combats just hurt everything as it does actually draw in the Grim Snarl, which is amazing. Close combat nearly takes it out from full and that is a super great thing to see. This thing being paralyzed in low health is amazing. I can then just go for another close combat and it does actually get fully parried. So that is one way to neutralize what the hell a Grim Snarl is gonna do and one more punch to the face does take care of it. So Metacham uh, takes care of another kind of defensive answer that I think could come in, set up more screens, parting shot, and just do annoying buff fairy guy stuff, and that's amazing. So while all is good and well with that, unfortunately now the Galarian Slow King comes back in with more health than he left with because of that regenerator ability, and also I'm stuck into close combat. So of course I have to switch out of here, but Metacham for this middle to late game is actually looking really nice as uh, revenge killing and just doing great damage. So. Uh, I actually decided to go right into the Alolan Executor. Take a Sludge Bomb, which knowing I can take at least one is fine. I was kind of hoping they were going to go for something not super effective on the tree there, but this is mostly fine because at this point I can just drop a Draco Meteor here, get some big damage at least, and uh, try to whittle this thing down a bit. So it doesn't quite knock this thing out as we've seen that this asshole is fully specially defensive, which is a damn bold move, but it's going to activate my Eject Pack which now allows me a free switch into whatever I want. Not a lot of the time is the tree going to go first there, which kind of sucks because the eject pack is going to allow me to switch right into an attack here, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go back into Metacham here because I know that I can take a Sludge Bomb for sure. Hoping for no poison, and of course, they do get the poison. I take it nicely. However, the poison is going to put me on a bit of a timer here, um, but honestly, Metacham is not the kind of guy that really cares too much about uh, the amount of health it's at. It's going to outspeed a lot, and it's just kind of here to put huge offensive pressure, get big damage, and then switch out. So, at this point, now knowing that their dark type is taken care of, I can just lock myself into the Zen Headbutt. And they don't have a whole lot of answers, not a lot wants to switch into this thing, but they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra into Terra Fairy, thinking I can get rid of the weakness to the Psychic Attack, and then maybe be able to finish off the Metacham, who is a big threat here. So, I go for that Zen Headbutt. Surely, his ass is not living that. I have a forehead made of pure Zen. And that does it. So at this point, they are down to two Pokemon left. Two pretty scary ones. However, you think Metacham might care, but Metacham does not give a shit. It's actually, it's going to be the Backscalibur along with the Inteleon. So at this point, I am locked into the Zen Headbutt. And Close Combat is a move that's going to be able to take care of both of those at full health. Plus, we've already seen they've committed the Terra. So as they bring in Inteleon here, I know that a Zen Headbutt might not be quite enough. And Metacham is a great win con at this point. And also, going into a little Executor here is basically just a free uh, sack. But not only that, I can actually come in, frisk it, and see what item this thing's working with. Turns out, it is in fact wearing some choice specs, as they actually knock me out with the U-turn. So, you get a little bit of info there with a dead tree. And they are, of course, going to have to pivot into the Backscalibur here. So, uh, with Backscalibur here, I'm like, you know what, I could go for the close combat. But I'm actually also worried about it having the Ice Shard to pick off the Metacham. And uh, the safest kind of middle ground play here is just to go right back into MC Hammer. I got a big ass bronze hammer ready to kill some dragons. And uh, at full health, I should be in a spot here where I can take even an Earthquake. So, they do go for that Earthquake. I do have some defense investment on this bad boy. I'm able to take that nicely. And then a Gigaton Hammer does actually just obliterate his ass. So, I wanted to use Metacham there. However, the prospect of the Ice Shard 
was in fact scary. And now the final Pokemon left is gonna be Choice Specs Inteleon. He's a slithery, quick little guy with some pretty big damage with that Choice Specs. And uh, it's kind of a scary lizard here. Also, at this health, and even though Tinkaton is specially bulky, I'm probably not going to be able to take a hit. Uh, did you actually end up going for the Ice Beam? Likely predicting the switch into the Zapdos, but that does allow a, the Tinkaton to take that and then go for the knockoff. So I say, hey, no more, no more glasses for you, buddy. You're not going to be able to see shit out of here. And uh, that's actually totally fine. What that does do, though, is makes it to now they can actually switch their move. And uh, I'm like, you know, there's no reason to switch out here. I just stay in. They go for that snipe shot because they can switch. Points the old finger at me like a damn gun. And that does take care of the Tinkaton. But uh, that is fine because even though Skinny Lizard over here looking quick as hell, I do have the Scarf Metacham in the back. This is honestly one of my favorite revenge killers because it just, it seems to have great coverage against a lot. Like more than you would expect with the psychic fighting. And uh, even with the ice punch is great. So I can just go for that close combat, outspeed, punch the hell out of him, and uh, snap his ass in half. And that is going to do it. So Metacham barely hangs on being poisoned, but we are absolutely chilling. So that's the end of the game. Super fun match there. This team is uh, pretty offensive and just a good time. But you already know I have one more battle for you. So, as always, this is a great time for me to ask you guys, hey, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. And in match number two, we're going up against some pretty large threats. First of all, we have the Ogre Pond that is insane. And there's also uh, Dragonite along with another Grimmsnarl. There's Chien Pao. There's some big stuff over here. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So this time, my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Hungry Hippo. Hippowdon comes in, and I have a Hungry Fairy ready to hammer some stuff. And uh, it's not really a great matchup here. While I know this thing likely just sets up Stealth Rock turn one, and there's always the prospect of the Earthquake, I decide the Stealth Rock is valuable for me. Not only does it break the Marvel scale on the Dragonite on switching, but also it's just good for kind of punishing switches. So I get up that Stealth Rock, and uh, we just go ahead and compare sizes. He goes for the Stealth Rock as well. And uh, that's mostly fine, because it's better than taking an Earthquake here. So at this point, I figure, you know what, I can actually just Encore them into that Stealth Rock, because I know that they want to click Earthquake, and with the Encore, guarantees that this thing has to just throw some more rocks up. But, you've used your rock limit, buddy. No more Stealth Rocks around here. And uh, I don't really have much to do here, but I know this thing's not going to stay in. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go for the knockoff. Whatever wants to switch in is going to lose their item, and that's going to be a bad time for whatever it is. So, I'm going for the knockoff. It turns out they have the one guy, I guess, a few, that can not lose its item. It, item is freaking built into his face, so no matter how hard I try to knock its ass off, it does, in fact, uh, stay there. So, it does do some solid chip here, plus with that sandstorm, it's actually in a pretty manageable spot. So, I'm thinking, you know, an Ivy Cudgel is not really in the cards for Tinkaton here today. And while I'm super useful against the rest of their team, I'm just going to switch out into the defensive pointy bird. Now, I don't really have a whole lot of switch-ins. Uh, to Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, because I'm gonna tell you, not a lot of them exist. This thing is pretty wild in terms of if it can get a Swords Dance up and then Terra's, it's actually kind of insane. So Zapdos is actually in a weird spot here, right? Because I don't imagine they really want to stay in here, and my best option is to try to get a pivot and a little bit of momentum with a Volt Switch, but they just go right back into the Hippo. And uh, Hippo, of course, does not care about no Volt Switch. And I'll tell you what, one thing for sure is that uh, this Hippo is pretty annoying defensively against me. So, what I want to try to prioritize here is going for a Hurricane and try to get some chip and whittle this thing down a little bit here. I go for that Hurricane, of course, it is going to miss. Sometimes You got to raw dog a Hurricane sometimes, I've said it before, it's going to miss. But, uh, they actually decide to go for the Roar, yells at my ass and makes me switch out, which is totally fine. As uh, this is going to drag in a random mod, I'm thinking, hey, Executor, come in here. Nope, it actually is just Tinkaton, who doesn't really enjoy the matchup. Again, an Earthquake does a lot to me. I can get some solid chip with a Gigaton Hammer, potentially knock off to get rid of the item. Uh, but in general, Roar is just kind of uh, annoying. And while I could just decide and chip this thing here, I'm like, you know what would be even better and more funny is if I just go for an Encore and be like, hey, that was awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna see, need to see you do that again, buddy. I do go for the Encore. Locks them into the Roar as they're probably trying to Earthquake at this point. Um, but I'm like, you know what, maybe the luck gods are going to bring an Executor this time. Surely two two times, there's not that many options here. Bring in Executor, allow me to drop a Leaf Storm. Nope, brings in the worst possible option, which is actually freaking Muck. And <laughs> while I do have the potential to Terra here, I don't really want to commit that early. 
Um, but Muck is kind of in a position here where, you know, I know I can take at least an attack. I'm like, you know what, whatever. Maybe they actually predict me to switch out and go for another roar. So I just decide to stay in here, which is not expected. Go for the knockoff, actually get the poison touch. And not only do I poison his ass, but I poison his lunch too. Make your citrus berry all over the floor and dirty, so you definitely can't be eating that. And uh, they do actually predict the switch and go for another roar. So the Stealth Rock and Roar shenanigans here is doing some uh, doing some damage to the guys. But this does actually end up dragging out the slacking. I'm like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this damn hippo and his shenanigans here. So at least slacking is in a spot where I'm like, you know what? Fuck, I'm going to go for the Giga Impact. That is totally fine with the Choice Band and the amount of damage we have. That definitely kills the hippo. And that does... Finally finish the guy off. Pause. But yeah, at this point, Giga Impact there is kind of not the greatest play because I have to take a turn of recharge. And that is just going to allow in the Dance and Duck who comes in just giving me a free show as I must recharge. And uh, it does allow them to go for the close combat. But here is where Tra Slacking's bulk is like, oh damn, I actually live it with 5 HP. That has to have been a low roll. Um, but this actually is in a spot where now I actually outspeed the Duck. And I can go for another Giga Impact and kill it. But I miss. I don't know what the hell the deal is with missing Giga Impacts and moves that are not supposed to freaking miss. But I always seem to make it happen. So they do finish me off with another close combat there. And down goes the sleepy guy for the for the long eternal rest. So with that thing gone, kind of sucks because now they do get a moxie boost. But what this thing is not faster than is uh, the Scarf Metacham. I can bring in Nipplany, and uh, while bringing this thing in here kind of does reveal the fact that I am Scarf, it's fine because... What are you going to switch into a huge power Metacham? Not much. That's the answer. Actually, that's a lie. They do have a Chen Pao, who I figure is definitely not switching in here. And then the Grim Snarl could have potentially. But I just decided to go for the obvious play. Go for the Zen Headbutt. It does, of course, take care of the Peacock Duck. And uh, now I am locked into that close combat. So they actually decided to go into the Ogre Pond here. Knowing that I was faster was in a spot where, like, hmm, I'm definitely still faster than this thing. And a close combat kill. So I'm like, they're going to probably Spiky Shield. And what I can actually do in this spot is just bring in Zapdos. Predicting the Spike of Shield, I can get this thing in for free. Surely I can take an attack and then potentially fire off Hurricanes or even, you know, some Volt Switch action. Now with Hippo gone, that does kind of open up the door for the pivot. So they actually end up going ahead and committing the Terra here, and that makes this thing a whole lot scarier. They basically, the guy gets a damn Mega Form, gets his face all massive, and the Embody Aspect is also going to give this dude uh, the nice little plus one in attack. So that is why this is one of the things that you, it, 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 nothing switches in here. They actually go for the play rough, and with the non-stab, I do in fact actually switch in here. Fully defensive Zapdos is kind of the one thing that could. Uh, however, they actually just decide to go for the spiky shield, I assume, just to kind of scout what I'm going to go for here. But all I really got is hurricanes. And just, sometimes you, you throw the hurricane out there and just pray that it hits. Most of the time, I guess, in real life, you pray the hurricane does not hit. But in this situation, we want it to obliterate everything. But uh, it does not. This now allows them to go for the Ivy Cudgel. And with the Terra boost here, it is actually uh, going to be a bad time. It does. It clubs me at my ass to death. And down goes the Zapdos. But as I figure, you know what? I probably should have just stayed in with the Metacham initially. Because as I'm thinking about it, punching thorns ain't even that bad. I'm just going to go right back into Nipple Knee here. And uh, the Scarf Metacham is going to show that uh, this thing is nothing to play games with here. They can just go for a Spiky Shield if you want, but I'm going to punch them. There's one thing that is true, and that is I'm going to be punching. So they go for that Spiky Shield, uh, which is, uh, it's like, ouch. My fingers probably hurt a little bit after that, but it's not really the end of the world. Because uh, I got close combats for days out here, baby. I'm going to outspeed. I get a little bit hurt, but again, Metacham does not really care about taking chip. I can then outspeed, go for that close combat and finish off the biggest threat on the field. So with some bloody knuckles and probably bloody leg boobs, we're uh, we're feeling pretty decent here. You know, I do take you know the defensive drop, uh, but at this point, they don't have a whole lot of answers for the meta jam. They actually decide to go into the Chen Pao as Danger Noodle comes in and definitely threatens with the prospect of a Sucker Punch. But one thing I am all about is the Sucker Punch mind games. They can potentially go for it, but if they predict the switch, they're gonna get bopped. They do in fact, not go for that sucker punch, and that results in a dead Chien Pao. So that is amazing. And Metacham is going on a little mini tear here. So Stealth Rock in this position was great because I really wanted that to ensure, if, even if that was like a Focus Ash Chien Pao, uh, that is the outcome we get. So their final Pokemon, or actually I guess they do have two Pokemon left. The Dragonite comes in, and I have myself a big brain moment here where I'm like, okay, close combat looks like a two-hit KO here, and 
I also have the Terra Fairy. Now, I'm running Terra Fairy on this thing because I have been kind of playing with uh, putting uh, Terra Blast on this thing as well. But at this point, I can go for a defensive Terra Fairy because I'm just thinking surely I get the close combat off and then they definitely click something like a Dragon Claw to finish me off. So the CC is going to look like it's kind of enough to knock it out here. I get some pretty big chip there at that point, but... They actually, actually have some different ideas. They go for the Thunder Punch, and with my defensive drops, I'm like a damn wet paper bag over here. And I do, in fact, die. So the Terra Fairy does not come to fruition, and that's mostly fine. Because we do have this Dragonite in a spot where it's definitely been chipped, at least enough, I feel like. So this now allows me to go into Muck, and honestly, as long as the Dragonite hasn't set up Dragon Dances, we are in a pretty good spot. Because I can go for the poison jab or knock off anything at this point and it's going to be enough to finish it off. They do just go for the thunder punch once again. Does a whole bunch of damage and gets the para. And the guy predicts the freaking para off the thunder punch. I don't know what the hell is going on. But uh, the poison jab does finish it and down goes the Dragonite. So now they're down to one final Pokemon left. And it is going to be that Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl is the kind of dude who enjoys having his friends around. When it's by itself... It's not nearly as scary, plus I do have the, the guy out that I want here, as uh, Muck can definitely knock this thing out with a poison jab, unless we get para, unfortunate, but we actually do not. Somehow I go first there. What did that thing click that allowed me to go first? I don't know, but a poison jab finishes it off, and that is going to be the end of the game there. So Muck was literally had like 10 speed there at that point, but sometimes... I guess it's fine. That's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support lately on these videos. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.